Hey guys, and welcome to Cricket Fanatics Magazine. I'm Khalid Maiden, and this is an exclusive interview with Jacques Sneiman. And I had to get him on. I had to have a conversation with him because he did something quite amazing in this opening round of fix four day fixtures. Jacques, first and foremost, before we get into that, just tell me what it feels like for you to be back in cricket again, playing cricket again, obviously competitive cricket after this long COVID period of a break. Yeah, first, thanks for having me. Um, it's really nice to be back on the field after the tough times with COVID and stuff. Um, I think we um, we all got a lesson from it, um, training at home, doing your basics at the house, because um, you couldn't get into the facilities to do your work. And yeah, get, um, being able to get back on the field is, yeah, there's no words for that. I think we all just, we were all looking so so forward to it. And yeah, really it's really nice to be back out in the middle again. Yeah, because I mean, most people now at the moment are still, I'm talking about not professional cricketers, but other cricketers are still under lockdown, can't really play much sport. Um, it's quite interesting because a lot of people were trying to crack the code and see what they must do during COVID to get themselves fit and ready. Nobody knew what was going to happen. It seems like you did it successfully after the performance that you, you put in. <laughs> well, I was fortunate enough to work um, with Alan Donald himself. Um, I think he has helped me a lot. And then obviously, Gerard Marira helped us for a little bit um, when it just opened again. And I think Gerard has done wonders um, with my cricket. So, yeah, I um, just wanted to say thanks to him if he's listening as well. Um, yeah. He has made a massive um, difference in my batting. Yeah, I mean, you spoke about Alan Donald. What is it like to have a legend like him as your coach? <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously nice to have a guy of his caliber around and obviously picking his brain. Um, we can only learn from him. I mean, he's been around the world and yeah you can't get enough of him and he's a really good coach really professional and yeah we are really honored to have a coach like him yeah so let's go into that performance of yours obviously against the warriors you scored the fastest century in four day series history um in 71 balls obviously beating a teammate of yours sean von berg's record of 70 <laughs> uh, of 73 balls <laughs> what did he yeah. nudge you and, and say something to you uh, when you did that <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, so, um, I batted. I didn't even know that I was batting that quickly. To be completely honest with you, I was literally just. I just wanted to get back out in the middle and play the game I love. And then um, I think I got out uh, over before lunch, the round or something. And I got up, and Shawnee came to me and he tapped him on my shoulder and he's like, "You know what you what you've just done?" And I was like, <laughs> "No idea," because I was still a bit, little bit down because of the run up. And even Fudgy came to me and they said, "Listen, yeah." Um, well, but that well, that Fudgy told me you broke Sean's record by two balls, and I was like, "What record?" And then when they told me, I was like, "Wow, okay, it's something special and something I'll never forget." Yeah, it's sure. I mean, talk to me about that because it's very seldom that people get to see. I wish I was at the stadium to be able to see it. I was at the at the Cobras versus Titans game, so um, I wish I was at the stadium to be able to see that innings. What went through your yeah. mind? Like, how did you well, approach it? Yeah, to be honest, um, we got there to the field um, the third well the first morning. Um, and the wicket looked a belter. Luckily, part won the toss and we could mm -hmm. bat. So I think all the batters were smiling. Um, yeah, take nothing away from the widest um, bowling attack, but there weren't much in the wicket for them to work with. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just kept on ticking. And I think another thing that helped um, was Maddie that's left handed and I'm right handed. So I don't think the bowlers could have settled into a rhythm um, because mm -hmm. we kept changing um, rotating strike. The bad balls went for four. Um, so yeah, it was really, really good innings. It's virtually like a whole new top order. Like I mean, like yeah. Matthew <laughs> Clayfield at the top of the order. I mean, it's you there now, um, as well as Rainer van Tonde below you. I'm, I'm going to dive into that first of all. Your partnership with with someone like Matthew Clayfield. How has he settled in that at the nights? I think um, Matty has settled in really, really well. Um, I think we, well, me and him is both hungry to uh, put our name out there. Because I don't think, well, before this season. Um, not me or him were getting franchise games and like I said we've been working hard in the off season Mary and myself as well working together um, with Jonathan Van yeah, that gave us a lot of advice as well um, so yeah we're just hung um, hungry to play and give it our best mm. you look below you and you see a guy like Renan van Tonda I mean a lot of us though have seen him in obviously four day cricket and what is it like to perform and play with him look Reinhardt is a he's a really good batter um really really good technique and obviously when he comes out and um, out to bat there's no stress because he's got a serious technique and he can tick the tick the ball over for runs um so yeah really really good batter and i think he's got a bright future ahead of him 
Mm -hmm. I mean, we're obviously looking for a lot of opening batsmen like yourself that can can bat this quickly. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be able to do it every single time. It's depending on all the conditions. No, um, but yeah. but what drives you as an opening batsman? Um, is that the position that you see yourself in for the for the for the future? Is it an opening batsman yeah. where you want to always bat? Yeah. To be honest with you, I want to first be settled in the night team across all formats and. I would like to open across all formats because, yeah, I just like a new. I, well, I like facing the new ball, but mm -hmm. if I can play, I don't mind where I'm batting. But if I can pick, I would like to open because I feel that's where I'm probably at my best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so obviously you're lucky now that Fudgy came back and he didn't sign that contract and he's now here at the Knights. Um, what does a guy like him in the dressing room, what does that do that for you from a confidence point of view and from a mental point of view? What has he taught you so far in this little space of time? Look, Fadji is a massive senior player, and I think it's for all our youngsters that still want, um, well, we're still learning our games. Um, having a guy like Fadji around in the changing room, that's always helping us, always give us a better game plan if ours is a bit high risk, but he doesn't change our games. He just says, try this and this and this, it might be lower risk, but he doesn't say you must. He just gives that mm -hmm. idea to you. And then if you sit and think about it, it is, the, well, he just lowers the risk so much, and yeah, like a guy with him, um, he always speaks to us in the net, he comes to us, he asks us our game plans, he helps us we can. It's a really, really, really good guy to have around with Alan himself as well. So I think we're really fortunate tonight having a guy like Fadji, Alan, Khalat Maria that was with us. Um, then you have the seniors of um, like the likes of Sean Von Bath, Pite Van Bouillon. I mean, you can't ask for any better. Well, you're lucky to have one of the fastest bowlers in South Africa in your team, um, Gerald Kutsia, the young yeah. bowler. Uh, what is yeah. it like to face him in the net And If you faced him out in the middle, do you think you'll be able to take him on? <laughs> Look, we in the preseason, we played a few games against him. Um, he has raw pace, um, a really aggressive bowler. Um, he's also um, definitely a youngster for the future. But yeah, like I said, I, I don't have uh, an issue with pace. So for me, it's all good, all good. I like the pace. So. <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay, so I want to talk to you about the victory because it was a massive victory against the Warriors. And oh, yes, we know that the Warriors went through some COVID um, problems beforehand and lost some of their players like their captain, etc. But besides that, it was a massive dominating performance. Um, what did the coach, come, type of conversations did you have with the coach and what was your approach in this game to be able to get a victory like that? With the season being shortened, I think we all knew we have to get momentum as soon as possible. Because um, I think the team um, with the most momentum will probably win this campaign. As it's only seven games, so if you're off, it's going to be difficult to come back from there. So we wanted to throw the first punch, and I think we did it from ball one. Yes, the, the, the game wasn't televised, but to give you an example, the first ball of the game was like a back of a length ball, and Maddie Klein felt pulled that he put it away. And that gave a, a strong word to them and say, we're here to dominate. We're not here to mess around. And like I said, um, we batted really well in the first innings, set up a good game. And then, yeah, it was like a toss and ten if we want to if we wanted to follow on. If not, because we weren't sure if we have enough. Because the Warriors is capable of chasing any score down. We know they're a dangerous team. Um, but for us, having the momentum on our side now, especially um, this week coming against the, uh, the Dolphins, we want to make it count. Um, obviously, um, keep going where we left. I know you have to start over, but we want to carry that momentum over and make a good statement to the other teams. Okay, so personally, I mean, I've I've spoke. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about international cricket and your goals for international cricket, what you are looking for, and with regards to that, I mean, I had a you know, conversation with Victor Impensang where he said that um, it's it's the domestic cricketers are going to be the obviously the feeders to the international side, and everybody has yeah. an opportunity to impress him. So, from your perspective, is there a particular format that you're first targeting with regards to international cricket? Is there one particular format that you have your eye on first? Look, if I can pick any white ball cricket, I feel I'm really dangerous, especially top of the order, because I like to take the game on. Um, but then take nothing away from my red ball as well. So if I can, my big dream is to represent South Africa. I don't care in what form it is, as long as I get there, and I'll do whatever it takes to get there, because that is my ultimate dream, to play for South Africa. Cool. So finally, I just want you to give a little bit of a message to the fans out there obviously they're not going to be able to watch the games but um they're supporting you um via digitally on social media well to all the night supporters out there thanks for all the support and keep going we won't disappoint you guys we'll give it our all and hopefully we can win uh three competitions this season thanks a lot Jacques, and i'll speak to you again very yeah. soon i say yes. anytime take care thank, thank you. you bye, bye.